Hello everyone, and welcome to part 6 of how to make Pong in Unity. So we'll continue with um, polishing up our game, and when it's ready I'll show you how to export a finished project. So once again, we're going to tweak the ball movement so the player has a bit more control over the direction it moves. And I'd also like to speed up the bats a bit just so they move a bit quicker. So to get started, let's go into our scripts. Speeding up the uh, bats would be very easy. Just um, go to their velocities and change it from 5 to 10. The reason that I say 10 is because I have tested it and it just feels a lot better at 10 because you can go across the entire screen in a few sec in about a second which just feels smoother and allows for better gameplay so now in our ball controller we want this to change its direction based on how it hits the bats so what I'm going to need to do is access those game objects through the ball controller so public game object we have bat1 and we have bat2. So in our start function, let's tell our game that bat1 is game object dot find the game object named bat1. We do the same thing for bat2. My mistake. It's bat underscore one, bat underscore two. So the way we're going to change our ball's velocity is when it hits an object. So for this, we're going to need a function called onCollisionEnter. 2D and we're going to name it of type collision 2D and we need an identifier for collision type functions we're just going to name this hit but no colon and hit is supposed to go after collision 2D there we go. Now before we can start modifying the ball's movement based on how it hits the bat, we need to tag our bats with a certain tag. And just for simplicity's sake, just name it bat. Oh. And then we tag this first bat as bat and the second one as bat. Now, in our on collision enter, we want to say if hit dot game object dot tag equals equals is it a capital B or a lowercase b? Capital B. For testing purposes, I just want to print turn around. All right. And in our play window, just going to hit the ball so it can test it. All right, and it's working. Good. Actually, it'll be probably better to use dot name because we need to change the velocity based on how it hits each bat. So now that we have it checking collisions, we need to go check which direction the bat is moving. This is why we created our public game objects, because if the bat is moving up or down, or not at all, it will change how, it's, how the ball is supposed to bounce back. 
So I went out to write the code that would be used to track the hits. It's the simple thing we've done before, where we check the velocity condition, and we're going to see if it's greater than zero or less than zero. Otherwise, we're going to assume it is zero. Now, after the hit, we're going to change our rigid body velocity to travel in some direction based on the movement. And just so I don't have to type that out again, I just copy this. Alright, so when the bat is moving up, we want our ball to move up. And since bat 1 is on the left, we want it to move to the right, which would be 10. So this can stay as 10f, 10f. And if it's moving down, we want it to move down at negative 10f. Still moving to the right, so 10f. And when it's not moving, we just want the ball to say, stay still. Ooh, I forgot to delete this part. There we go. So now we will, this will be controlling how the ball moves around the scene. And I'm just going to copy it and change some of the values so we can get it to work with the other bat. And since this one has to move left, we want all these x's to be negative, and the y's can stay the same. So now let's test this. Click play. All right, wait for the ball to start moving. Now, staying still, it bounces straight back. Moving up, it bounces upwards. All right, still bounces upwards. Let's try moving down, bounces down. And let's try to make it go straight again. Good. Now, I would like the ball to move faster when it's going straight. And we can do that just by changing this from 10F to, say, let's try 14F in the X direction. And in our I enumerator pause, let's also make this 14F. So now let's see how the game plays with a faster ball. Alright. Oh yeah. That definitely keeps you on your toes. Yeah. Although it seems to be moving too fast where it's hard to tell exactly where it is and it's a little disorienting on my eyes. So I'll slow it down to 12. Alright. Let's try it again. Now we wait. There it goes. Alright. And it's going all sorts of directions. So now that we have a lot more control over where the ball goes, it becomes a lot a bit less predictable. Now there's one last thing that we need to do to get this game perfect, and that's fix our scoreboard. For some reason, when we made the scene bigger, it stopped updating the score. Now, I don't want to just change our um, conditions for incrementing the score because this is a little dangerous to do. Instead, I want to use the onCollisionEnter function because onCollisionEnter is certain to be active for one frame, so it will be certain to increment one point. So in the next episode, we're going to tweak our scoring system by making it done by hitboxes instead of when the ball reaches a certain point away from the camera. Anyway, thank you for watching, and tune in next episode where we finish the game. Goodbye.